What is up, everybody? It is week one. Welcome to the Action Network podcast presented by FanDuel. I'm your host, Chris Raybon, and I am joined by my dude, the top ranker in the game, Sean Kerner. Sean, what is going on? How you feeling? What's up, man? Brand new season, brand new location. Uh, the squeaky chair, the infamous squeaky chair is gone. Um, I'm no longer stuck in a corner. Uh, can't wait for this season. Gabe Davis is starting in two days. Are, are you pumped or what? I am very, <laughs> very, very pumped for Gabe Davis. Uh, you know, we'll talk about him, I'm sure, every week throughout the season. Uh, and this episode, we, what we're going to do is we're going to throw it back to, you know, how we used to do these episodes. And we're going to run through a top five at each skill position. We're going to discuss the players we're high and low on at each position. And uh, we'll throw out a prop. Uh, for each position as well. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And if you're looking for uh, some DFS content, some more in-depth DFS content, uh, we have an episode over on the Fantasy Flex channel where we're going to build lineups and uh, talk dart throws and kind of run through uh, the Thursday slate and the main slate. So check that out as well. But uh, we're going to just kind of go through it here. And uh, to start off, let's go with quarterback. Who are your top five for week one? Uh, of 2022 so number one is josh allen no surprise there but then number two i got jalen hurts i uh, told you i was high on him and then number three got lamar jackson then justin herbert at number four and Patrick Mahomes at number five yeah i got the same guys a little bit of a different order i got allen mahomes lamar third hurts fourth and justin herbert fifth so uh i kind of want hurt second that's yeah that's you gotta hard. bump him up man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the matchup, but uh, I like this matchup for Mahomes as well. I'm just really yeah. down on the Cardinals cornerbacks. I mean, mm. you know, as if it wasn't bad enough, uh, Hamilton got in a cooking accident and he's going to miss the game. And they just traded for Trayvon Mullen. It's the highest over under uh, on the slate at 54. So I actually like Mahomes even without Tyreek yeah. in this game. I think he's going to ball out. And it's Andy Reid, you know, week one. Yeah, week one. Oh. Yeah. Like yeah, it's it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a good game for him. Uh, all right, who are you high and low on uh, at quarterback this week? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, I'm high on Jalen Hurts uh, for what seems to be like the 23rd consecutive week. Um, this week, you know, he opens up against the Lions, so you couldn't ask for a better matchup. Um, now he has AJ Brown at his disposal, so his his ceiling is just way too massive to ignore now. Um, so I love him. Obviously, he's my QB two this week. The uh, the the Lions, you know, their defense is pretty weak. They ranked 29th in DVOA last season. I think they could be slightly improved this year, but they're still a below average defense. Um, they blitz at the seventh highest rate last year, and Jalen Hurts actually does pretty good against the blitz. He does better against the blitz um, than you know three or four pass rushers. So love him. I, I you know I had to resist myself for making him number one. I couldn't do it. Uh, but love him as the number two QB overall this week. Um, and then this game, the uh, the Falcons-Saints game, I think this game is a sneaky stat game. Both QBs are super cheap uh, on FanDuel. Uh, so I love me some Jameis Winston. You know, heading into week one of last season, his top three receivers were Marquez Calloway, Deontay Hardy, I guess at the time it was Deontay Harris, uh, and Lil Jordan Humphrey. Um, and that is a far cry from who he has going into week one this year. He has Michael Thomas, hopefully, Jarvis Landry, and Chris Olave. So, um, you know, he has shown that he can produce low-end QB1 numbers when he's surrounded by talent, and that's what he has going from this year. He has Alvin Kamara for week one at least. Um, so I love him in this matchup, and he's, like I said, he's super cheap on panel at 6,700. And then on the other side, Marcus Mariota, Love him this week as a cheap upside flyer. He has that dual threat ability we love. But he also has a ton of weapons himself in Cordell Patterson, Drake London, who I love, and of course, Kyle Pitt. So this game, I think, has a ton of stacking options. Both QBs are super cheap. So uh, those are my two favorite cheaper quarterbacks. Yeah, you stole my guy, Marcus Mariota. Oh. I mean, I, I, I'm just going to target these rushing quarterbacks, you know, when I'm looking for fantasy value because, you know, Mariota is a guy who – He's not going to light it up throwing the ball, but we saw what he, even in the preseason, like he goes all out. Like he's, he's an injury risk. That's actually how hard he goes, but uh, still love him. I have him at QB 20 and he's. The oh, 20. Yeah. 
Yeah, I thought I was super high at 22. Man, you yeah. got me there. And the consensus <laughs> is 28. So, you know, I think people, he's not really on anyone's radar, but, you know, two QB leagues, things like that. You know, it's cheap DFS play, like you said. Yep. I think you got to target a guy like him. All right. Uh, who are you lower than consensus on? Um, I'm pretty low on Aaron Rodgers this week. Uh, right now he's QB 13, but um, there's there's some issues going on. Like not only did he lose Devontae Adams, everybody knows that. He also lost Marquez Valdez Scantling. I think that's going to hurt his ceiling even more. But it sounds like El Lazard is now iffy for week one. And Robert Tunyon is iffy. We knew that heading into the season he was going to be iffy. So um, it's going to have to be the Romeo Dobbs show. Thank God he has Romeo Dobbs. But uh, other than that, like it, it's pretty shaky. Even Christian Watson, who they drafted in the second round, is iffy for week one. So I think this offense, at least the passing attack, could be a bit sluggish early in the season. I think they're just going to lean on Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon heavily in week one against the Vikings. So I, I'm pretty low on Aaron Rodgers. Again, he's he's sort of outside of that streaming discussion, and he's 7,800 on FanDuel. So he's a full fade for me there. Yeah, Rodgers, like the weapons just aren't the same. You know, Devontae Adams was accounting for about a third of his yardage, a third of his touchdowns, and that's just not going to, you know, they're not just going to be able to replace that production, especially in week one. Uh, the Packers have started slow, even under LaFleur. They've been brilliant, but week ones, they've had a couple of ugly ones under Matt LaFleur, none uglier than last year's 38-3 to drubbing by the Saints. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, this is this is a spot where I think, you do want to kind of tread lightly with the Green Bay Packers. Uh, so, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is a guy, too. But I'll, I'll name another guy who's kind of on the, I think, on the brink that even though you drafted him as a, a, a surefire starter, I, I might consider benching him this week. And that's Dak Prescott mm. because it's kind of the same situation. Yes, you have CeeDee Lamb, but we know how valuable Tyron Smith is to that offense. You know, you see the splits with and without him, you know, the yards per play, the yards per attempt. They all go down, you know, like a half yard or more with Smith off the field. So I, I think that's going to be an issue. And they, they kind of adjusting on the fly. You know, this just happened last week. And also, you only really have one viable go-to guy in CeeDee C- C- Lamb. And you have a bunch of inexperience with Tolbert and Simi Fihoko and, you know, Kevante Turpin. I mean, there's just not a hey, lot of USFL that... legend. Oh, I love him. I love Turpin. <laughs> but, you know, as far as guys – that are going to be able to reliably get open compared to last year when Cedric Wilson was your number four, Cedric Wilson, you know, on some teams is a number two, you know, number three on Miami this year, but he's a good, one of the best number fours in the league. And to go from that to lose Cooper as well. uh, You know, it's just, it's going to be tough sledding. I think for, for Dak in this one uh, against the, uh, against the Buccaneers who still have a, a pretty good defense. I know it's a game with a high total, but I, and it's because they play at a fast pace, but I think they're going to lean on Zeke. You know, Jerry Jones has been talking Zeke uh, all off season, So I think the Cowboys are going to have to kind of slow the game down a little yep. bit more, run the ball, you know, get Tony Pollard involved. But I don't think it's going to be a big uh, passing game for Dak unless he gets some some garbage time, which could happen. But yeah, yeah I wouldn't bet on it. All right, let's uh, let's go with a quarterback prop and we'll, we'll kind of switch it off. So, this week, uh, you can start us off with uh, QB, and I'll, I'll take running back next. Yeah, so we're going to have a contest for this, yep. right? So whoever has the best record at the end of the year, we'll figure out the prizes, but it's got to be something good. Um, okay, I'm going with – I have to do this. Russell Wilson, total passing yards against his former team, the Seattle Seahawks, on minor football. I mean, kudos to the NFL schedule makers. It, it, it was probably an accent by how many revenge games we get, but this is my favorite one. So I got to hear your your prediction on this, but uh, I'm going to set the line at 268 and a half passing yards. What do you got? Uh, I'm going under. I, I have them oh. at about 255. I think you know this is a new offense for Russ. You know, it's like I don't I don't just think he's going to go out there and and bomb it all over the field. I mean, he probably wants to, but uh, I'm just going to kind of go with his normal uh, his normal what I think his median should be. You're not giving him the revenge game boost, which is at least 15 (laughs) and 20 yards. You're not doing it. If I did that, then I would (laughs) land pretty much exactly at your line. (laughs) If I do, I'm I'm not, I haven't done it yet. I I don't think I will. It's just really hard to quantify. Maybe I'll bump him up a little, but yeah, I haven't been in the mid two fifties. I just think that's kind of what his median is going to be this year. You know, that's kind of what we've seen out of Russ. So uh, yeah. Okay. I'll mark you down for under. Yep. 
that's pretty much the story of this podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay, I, I, I forgot. <laughs> I need to stop adding yards. I need yeah. to start taking them off. Okay. What do you think I am, Matthew? Friedman? Almost in almost in midseason form already. Love it. <laughs> uh, let's go to running back. Uh, who's your top five? Uh, it's pretty standard. I got Jonathan Taylor number one, Christian McCaffrey number two. Welcome back, uh, Derek Henry number three, Austin Eckler number four, and Dalvin Cook number five. I got me some Taylor number one. I got Henry up at number two, Eckler nice. three, CMC four. And number five, Alvin Kamara. He's still here. He's still here. True, so. true. <laughs> He's playing, right? He's playing against the, yeah. the Atlanta Falcons. They're probably not going to be a good defense. Probably so, not. Yeah, he just missed it. He's number six for me. He's right there between uh, he and Dalvin. Do you have Cook number six? Yeah, I just – Okay. I think yeah. Green Bay's run defense is actually going to be much improved. You know, that was a weakness mm-hmm. of them last year. But, I mean, you look up and down Green Bay's defense now. I mean, it's just strong all around. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of had to throw Kamara in that fifth spot. I just think, you know, don't the matchup just kind of breaks the tie for me. Right. Uh, all right. Who are you higher than consensus on? Uh, so when it comes to to Fandle specifically, I like uh, Saquon Barkley and Antonio Gibson in this sixty eight hundred range. Um, you know, Saquon Barkley, he is entering the season a hundred percent healthy. You know, we faded him early in the season and often in the season last year because he was hurt. Uh, but he is healthy, which means he has top five upside. Um, and this week, they might they might need to lean on him a bit more. Uh, once again, the Giants' pass catchers are in shambles. You have like four guys who are questionable, and then Kenny Gallaty healthy, but he's you know he's always questionable. He had a procedure. <laughs> a procedure. Oh. Gallaty did? Yeah, you didn't hear about that? Oh no. Well, I mean, it didn't show up on the injury report. Um, oh yeah, no. I mean, it, he's like the. I think it was Jordan Rannon. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Com- yeah, you saw that oh, the stiffness yes. of a mannequin comment. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. It might not exactly. be on the injury report, but he had a procedure. It's permanently questionable. That's what I meant <laughs> yeah. by that by stiff. Um, so love, love Barkley here, and I also like Antonio Gibson. I know you're pretty low on him, but I think this matchup suits him well because um, you know it should be a positive game script. Unfortunately, you know Brian Robinson is going to be out for the foreseeable future, so Gibson's going to handle a lot more of the early down work. I don't think they're going to just you know, give uh, Jonathan Williams the Brian Robinson role right away. So I think this is a good spot for Gibson. He could be used more in the receiving game as well because uh, J.D. McKissick himself has been dealing with a groin injury. So we've seen Gibson perform as a workhorse back, and, you know, he should be closer to that role this week than once Brian Robinson does return, hopefully. So love Gibson as well. He's my RB14 right now. I know, yikes. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's my uh, Monday morning or Tuesday morning ranking for you right there. But I love him this week. Um, and then, you know, Damian Pierce, uh, you know, he's super cheap on FanDuel as well. Like he's 5,400. He's obviously going to be highly rostered, but I'm a big believer in him. And, you know, the, the ADP rise over the past few weeks is certainly warranted. Um, you know, I think he's going to be the real deal. So I'm not going to just fade him because his roster ship's going to be high. This is the last chance you're going to get for him to be this cheap. So I'm all in on him. And another guy I just want to throw out there, he is the least sexy running back of the week, but it's Michael Carter. Um, I, like everybody else, want to see Brees Hall start from day one, but unfortunately that doesn't appear to be the case. So I think Michael Carter is sneaky in tournaments only at 5,200. Uh, I, I just think he's a nice contrarian play where he could out-touch Brees Hall this week. Um, and plus, this could be a negative game script. Joe Flacco could be dumping it off to Michael Carter. I think they'll use Michael Carter m- more than Brees Hall on third downs, um, at least for week one. So I think this would be the time to kind of sneakily play Michael Carter. So I'm fairly high on him compared to consensus this week. Yeah, Michael Carter will probably be like 1% rostered. Yeah, the, yeah right. I don't blame Indeed, it. will sneakily play <laughs> Michael Carter. Uh for me, I'm going to go with Chase Edmonds. I really like him this week. I think he's going to be that, you know, that top back in the Miami backfield, home favorite running back as well. New England struggled in, in run defense last year, and they struggled uh, with defense on running backs catching the ball. And I think that's, you know, that's Edmonds' forte. New England was bottom five in DVOA, uh, in uh, past DVOA against running backs last year. So I think Chase Edmonds is a lot of people just kind of wonder – what his role will be. We haven't really seen him. We don't know what this offense will look like, but I think you got to kind of play on that uncertainty. Cause I don't think he'll be that highly rostered 
uh, because of it. And uh, another player I like at running back is Elijah Mitchell. You know, we kind of talked about how you can't draft these <laughs> Shanahan running backs and you're probably going to end up disappointed at the end of the year. They'll probably drown in the frozen pond, but it's week one. So Elijah yeah. Mitchell should be healthy. Uh, they are a touchdown favorite. They're on the road. Trey Lance's third start of his career. They're going to run the ball, you know? And so even if they give, you know, Ty Davis price or Jeff Wilson jr. Some carries, I still think Mitchell gets, you know, 15 to 20 carries in this game. And uh, as, as a home favorite running back against the bears run defense, that doesn't project to be very good. And, you know, wasn't good last year. Uh, I just think the game script is going to be uh, right where we want yep. it for Mitchell. So I have him RB 17 and he's Woo! consensus uh, RB 20. So about three spots higher uh, on Mitchell, but uh, I think this is the time you want to play yep. him. Yep. Love it. All right. Who are you low on? Uh, I'm low on JK Dobbins uh, this week. He's my RB 38. There's a That's chance. Cheating. He doesn't, yeah, there's a chance. Well, let me just get it out there. There's a chance he doesn't even suit up, so that's very easy. But just again, we, we've been warning caution on him all offseason, but especially week one. Do not play him in DFS. Do not start him in fantasy. I just want to make that crystal clear in case you've been missing out on some of our offseason pods. But the other guy I don't like is uh, Josh Jacobs. Um, at least to begin this season, um, you know, it, it might be tempting because he is facing the Chargers defense which is a run funnel defense, but this could be a trailing game script. And this could be a frustrating two to three way committee. I mean, Josh McDaniels is coming over from the Bill Belichick coaching tree. So um, he's already said that Amir Abdullah or even like Bolden will be the James White role, which is going to cap Jacobs upside in the passing game. And then Zamir White, I love Zamir White. Um, he's certainly going to eat into Jacobs early down work, um, probably as soon as week one. So it's just tricky to really project out this backfield right now. So I have Jacobs just a little bit lower because it is murky. So he's my RB 26 right now. And he's way too expensive on FanDuel at 7K. So I'm, I'm just shying away from Jacobs this week. Jacobs is going to be such an interesting guy to watch. I mean, it's like the the opinions on him just went like, just so down. Like it's it's just absurd. Like nobody wants Josh Jacobs on their fantasy team anymore. He's still the consensus he's... RB 19, which is interesting. Wow. Yeah, no, I think he's good. Like he he should be the worst back. Like if I was managing the team, he would absolutely be, you know, like a low end RB one, but just, just the way they've been talking and, you know, drafting Zemir white, I'm just staying away. The, the Kenny on Drake um, release was, was helpful. I think that definitely boosts uh, Jacob's floor, but just week one, I'm just, be, he's in that sit start range. So I'm just uh, sitting him. It's interesting, you know, to kind of play devil's advocate with Josh McDaniels, they usually like those younger backs. Usually it takes like a year. Like remember Damian Harris's rookie year? Like we were like, Oh, yeah. Damian Harris is going to be a thing. And then he just was like a healthy scratch for most of the year. And then year two, it's like, okay, now Damian Harris is unleashed. Like I think Josh Jacobs could just be the Damian Harris of the, like that role for McDaniels this year. And then next year, Zamir White just takes over. Um, but it'll be interesting. To well, see maybe that. Zamir White is like the Ramondre Stevenson of last year. <laughs> that, he'll, that he'll, he'll have a 33 awesome. carry game. Or something like that. But uh, no, I agree. But they, they're the coaching staff that drafted Zamir White. So yeah, I think they, they do like him. They've been talking him up. Um, so while it's unfortunate, I mean, Josh Jacobs is still a uh, very talented back. It's just this situation is so murky. Uh, how many carries do you have for Jacobs, by the way? That is a great question. I have 12 and a half. Ooh, I think I... I but but think only I'm two receptions. Only yeah. two receptions in a game like this where, you know, they could go down. Um, that's where I'm just kind of worried about his floor. Where, where do you have him on his uh, rush and receptions prop? I I have him, hold on, let me look at it right now. So, yeah, I have him, I have him 14 carries and a one and a half reception, actually. So I'm oh, kind of okay. still giving him the normal yeah. 15, 15 ish yep. touches uh, and what should be a high scoring game. But I, I do have Amir Abdullah getting a lot of yeah. pass down work and Bolden. So I have Bolden and Abdullah combining for more uh, routes than Jacobs. Right. Yep. Uh, all right, guys, I am low on at running back. I got to go with Brees Hall, you know, loved the guy as a talent it was my favorite back coming out. But again, this is week one and the jets have kind of said, you know, Michael Carter 
going to start the year in that in, in like a 50 50 role at worst. He might even get the, you know, the quote unquote veteran deference and, and actually get more carries in this game. Right now, I have Hall and Carter splitting the, the snaps exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just because there's a lot of uncertainty, but uh, it could very well kind of swing in Carter's direction. You kind of mentioned it already uh, that you want to roster Carter. And so I'll just, you know, go the opposite way. Uh, I want to fade Reese Hall. And another guy that's kind of, on that on that cusp this week, usually he's going to be higher. But David Montgomery, just a tough matchup uh, against the 49ers, even though they're at home. Uh, they're big underdogs. That 49er defensive line is going to give Chicago and that offensive line problems. And, you know, they matched up last year. Montgomery didn't play, but Khalil Herbert started and he got 25 touches and gained 68 yards mm. with no touchdowns. So uh, that just kind of shows you that San Francisco front not really one you want to start running backs against. Uh, you know, if you're in a 10-team league, maybe you have some good running back depth. This may be a week uh, where you consider benching Montgomery. Should be one of his worst weeks, but uh, I just kind of take a wait-and-see approach, especially with the new coaching staff. You never know exactly how that split between him and Herbert uh, is going to be, uh, even though Montgomery did, you know, play a lot of snaps in that preseason tune-up. Uh, I still mm -hmm. think there's just a lot of a lot of more downside than upside with Montgomery uh, this week. Yeah, and you said you have uh, Brees Hall ranked 26. No, uh, consensus or... has him 26. I have him 32nd. Oh, oh, wow, yeah, I have him 36, and I don't like it, Ooh. but I like that we're kind of on the same page of this, where it's it's going to be sort of a 50-50 backfield. So my question for you is how many um how many routes run and how many receptions do you have for Brees Hall? So I have, I, I'll give you Carter and Brees. I have them both at 10 carries and Same. two catches. And their Same. routes, I'm giving them 37.5% each. So they, they add up to 75 combined. And then I have Ty Johnson getting another like. We are uh, right in line with those. <laughs> right in line. I have 40% routes run. Okay. Uh, Ty Johnson is out. He is out of the equation. Um, and then, yeah, 10, <laughs> 10, and then, yeah 10, 10 carries each, 10 carries each. Yeah. But, I mean, that's going to change immediately. <laughs> like, I give it by week three, uh, Brees Hall is going to be more of a workhorse back. Uh, but I think it will take them a couple games. I mean, I'm thinking the line for Brees, and it's not my prop, but I'm thinking the given the consensus oh. on Brees, books will probably post, like, mid to high 40s instead of like i have him at 42 yards yeah uh, so I'm, I'm guessing probably would look at an under i don't know if i would touch that i just think it, there's such a wide range of outcomes mm -hmm. um i'm probably gonna chicken out on that <laughs> um i thought i got excited i thought that that was gonna be your prop, nah, nah, I, prop. I got, so what do you what do you got come on we, we got to talk about damian pierce and really oh down yes what's okay. going on with, with damian because i mean he's just the hype has gotten unreal. I mean, I, yeah. I feel like we kind of watched it unfold when we were at that Rams Texans preseason game. And we were like, Oh my God, he's not playing. He didn't play with the first team. He's still not checking in with the second team. Mac is getting all these carries. Burke has getting all these carries. And then we're like, wait a minute, did he get the starter treatment? <laughs> <laughs> just bubble yep. wrapped. And since then, I mean, it's just been taken off. So uh, week one, biggest underdog on the entire slate are the Houston Texans. So uh, I am setting his rush yard over under at 56 and a half. What you got? And did you cheat and look at my projections? Be I honest. did not. Okay, good. Um, Cause I am right there with you. Um, I have it at 56. Ooh. Man. Um, 14 I'll go with carries? That. Yeah, 14 and a half. I will go under though. Um, I think this specific matchup, he's going to flash some of his pass catching ability. So I, I still like him, um, you know, in DFS and fantasy, but I'm going to have to go under. Uh, I, you got me here. Like I, I would say his, his median, <laughs> tough, right? Since my projections 56, his median is probably like 54. Uh, usually you dock off a couple yards for running back for rushing yards for median, but you, you didn't give me much uh, wiggle room or value here, but uh, I'm going to have to go with the under. Yeah, I have it. I have it right at uh, yeah. at fifty six for a median, so that's why I'm kind of yeah. Uh, trying that's to a great line because great line. It, it the Colts are number three or were number three, I should say, last year in run defense DVOA. So not an easy matchup 
uh, and biggest underdog it's, on the slate. That's that you know. It's, where where do you tough. think where do you think Fanduel's gonna float for it? Like if they float, um, you know, like a sixty and a half, would you go under? If they float a forty five and a half, would you go over? Um, or are you just staying away? Ooh, I I mean anything in the sixties, I would definitely go under. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the forties, forty five and a half, I'd probably go over. I but I think they'll float something in the in the right 50s. around. Yeah, yeah, like 52 and a half, something like that, and probably stay away. Yeah, anything yeah. in the 50s, I probably wouldn't touch because I think that's right in the range of like, you know, getting, you know, 10 to, to 14 carries. Yeah, know. once we just get one week's worth of data, we can start <laughs> to feel a little bit more confident about these yeah. numbers. But not that not that we're not confident about week one. We're about as confident as you can get about week one projections, but it's such a crapshoot. Yeah, I mean, with certain guys, I mean, you just kind of have to give them that, you know, what – normal starting running back workload like you don't you can't really fine yeah. tune it exactly uh until we kind of see you know who's running how many routes how many what percentage of carries exactly. these guys are getting um so yeah a lot of interesting guys like that you know uh Brees hall damian pierce all these rookies you never know uh, exactly how it's gonna look all right uh let's go to wide receiver and who are who's in your top five for wide out this week i got uh cooper cup Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams, actually. And then this is usually where we deviate. Uh, I have C.D. Lamb number four and Jamar Chase number five. <laughs> no Stephon Diggs, unfortunately. I what? Tried, to, tried all... to make it work. How, yeah, how I do tried you to... fade Stephon of all? Because Gabe yeah. Davis is playing a lot more. I feel you. And uh, Ramsey might be guarding both, like, you know, 50% of the time. Uh, just couldn't, couldn't do it. Uh, Jamar Chase is too good now. I love C.D. Lamb this week, so just... Diggs just missed it. He's my uh, wide receiver six. I could actually see flip flopping. I have him five right now, so I have I have Cup number one, Jamar Chase number two, Justin nice. Jefferson, <laughs> Justin Jefferson number three, uh, Devontae number four, uh, and Diggs number five. Uh, I might flip uh, Adams with Jefferson uh, if J.C. Jackson is indeed out, mm -hmm. uh, which he may be, because I, I do worry about Jair Alexander. With Jefferson, I mean Jefferson's the best <laughs> top two receiver, yeah. in the league, but Jair Alexander is probably a top two corner in this league, right there with Jalen Ramsey. So, uh, you know that it's still a tough matchup. I think Adam Thielen is an interesting pivot, but mm -hmm. um, you know you make a good point about Diggs and, and Ramsey too. So both of those guys, you know, this in this given week, that's why I kind of like Chase up there, number two. Yeah. I mean Cincinnati, I think they, I think Chase can destroy that Pittsburgh secondary. It's not, it's not as good as it used to be um, at all. So. Uh, I, I do like Chase this week, and uh, and then Devonte if if JC's out. Yeah, and I think the the improved offensive line for the Bengals will give Burrow more time. And I remember watching the Super Bowl; it seems like he he's looking for Chase almost every play. Um, and if he's covered, then it's T Higgins. But just having more time to throw, I think, is going to help Chase out tremendously this year. Yeah, I don't I don't foresee moving off Chase at wide receiver two. So I'd be interested to see if he ends up moving up your board uh as the week progresses yeah probably and if there were ever a week to have justin jefferson outside of the top two i guess this would be it but it, it's got to stop there like next week i don't know who they play next week but that that's dangerous keeping keeping jefferson outside your top three is uh no small task so kudos to you and kudos for having an awesome number two uh like jamar chase you're, you're starting the year off at the bang yeah, I mean, usually it's you, like the number five guy that's like the. the well, yeah, you, I think I think it was like Debo was sneaking in there early for me. Well, that's like you had Jamar Chase. <laughs> you're in your top five before anybody else. Same thing with Debo. Well, can't that can't was wait the guy? To, uh, can't that, wait Debo to, was the guy that you were ahead of last year. I'm gonna throw out a uh, an audible prop right now. Okay. It's not. It's not the one. It doesn't. It's not gonna count okay. toward our totals. But over under week eight point five, Gabe Davis enters our top five. Oh, um, uh, I'll just say, I'll just say under without looking at the schedule and every, I want to root for the under. Um, yeah, I called that with, um, Calvin Ridley, Ridley that Ridley. one year I predicted yeah. what we're going to have a week where Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley are in our top five. And sure enough, that happened by what week six. Um, but yeah, I, I would say under eight and a half weeks for sure. Yeah. And Gabe, he really does remind me of Ridley. Um, you know, yeah. just the seat coming into the, the season. Touchdown but... upside. Yep. Yep. All right. Who are you high on? DJ out? Moore. DJ Moore at 6,400 on FanDuel. Um, that's way too cheap for the clear number one target 
in this offense. It's a revenge game for Baker Mayfield. He is definitely an upgrade over the uh, trio of Sam Darnold, Cam Newton, PJ Walker, whoever they trot out under center last year uh, for the Panthers. So I think he just has a massive floor. Um, he probably does, you know, he doesn't have a massive, you know, touchdown upside, uh, but he's perfect for cash games. So I love DJ Moore in cash games. Darnell Mooney um, at 6,200. Uh, he's just inside my top 20, I think. Uh, he's been bouncing around mm. like wide receiver 21 uh, because, you know, we still don't know if Byron Pringle or Vilas Jones are going to play. They're both questionable. It sounds like they're both trending to play, but either way, they're not going to be, um, you know, 100%. So I just think it's going to be a top heavy passing attack with Mooney and Komet for week one and, you know, for the rest of the season, but especially week one. Um, I think Mooney's going to have a massive target share. Um, so love Mooney this week. Um, Hunter Renfro is a guy I'm monitoring. Uh, I don't know if Darren Waller's hamstring injury was due to him, you know, trying to get that new contract. But um, if if Waller is limited in any way, or obviously if he misses the game, Renfro is going to get a huge bump um, in my projection. So he's a guy I'm monitoring at least at 5,900 this week. Um, and then, Way down the list, uh, I kind of like Wandale Robinson this week um, at 4,700. Uh, again, the Giants have, like, uh, Kadaris Tony's questionable. Sterling Shepard is actually making, like, a miraculous comeback. Yep, I thought yep. he was going to be out for the first, like, eight games. He's going to lead the Giants in receiving. Like, yeah, no, he, believe me, once, once he's fully healthy, like, I love Shepard, but he's got to be somewhat limited this week. He has to be. The, the too fast of a recovery, in my opinion. Uh, sort of like Cam Akers, right? It's Achilles tear. So um, I, I just think Robinson is going to have a pretty big week one role. They've been really just moving around the formation, um, manufacturing touches for him. So this is, you know, obviously this is DFS tournament play only. Um, I think he could be sneaky if one or any of these guys um, ends up missing this week or if they're going to be limited. Uh, but I, I'm pretty high on him this week. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, like this, I have no idea like what to do with the Giants. <laughs> yeah, well, right like, now. I this just, early in the week, yeah, uh, what can you do? But I, he's someone to at least monitor. Absolutely. I, I mean, I I I kind of compare him to a Rondell Moore. I yeah. I think he's gonna play the Isaiah McKenzie role. Hopefully, it's the Isaiah McKenzie role once he started like overtaking <laughs> Cole Beasley. Uh, yeah. But uh, that that could be worthwhile. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh. Amon Ra. I love Amon Ra. I have him at wide receiver 20. He's wide receiver 29 uh, in consensus. You know, going against the Eagles, they're going to kind of play their their two-shell defense. I think oh. it's conducive to wide receivers catching the ball underneath. Yes, and they have a talented defense. Don't get me wrong. I think they improved a lot. But let's not forget Amon Ra was a top two fantasy receiver uh, over the last half or, you know, stretch of the season. And we don't have Jamison Williams yet. Yes, we have DJ Chark, but He's going to run a lot of clear outs. And this is not the defense for DJ Chark because, again, they're going to keep a lot of the two high shells. So I think you're going to see a lot of Amonra and you're going to see some TJ Hawkinson, so some underneath stuff, as you usually do with Jared Goff. But I think people have been sleeping on him. I know you were low on him in season one, but I think it's a good matchup for him. I think Philly's going to be able to score on that Lions defense. And, uh, you know, if that happens, watch out because I don't, I don't trust that Lions secondary at all. So I think the Lions – are going to have to put up some points themselves. And that's Amonra. And, you know, they're talking about they're still trying to get him the ball and on jet sweeps and things like that. So uh, I think he's going to keep on balling out uh, this season. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think he has a high floor. The only reason I was low on him is just his his touchdown upside seems limited. So he he's going to be sort of a DJ Moore type where you can't expect more than, say, six or seven touchdowns from him. But what I still DJ Moore he... ever gotten six or seven touchdowns? That's what I'm, sa I'm DJ saying. DJ Moore had... Like, like all that's right. his ceiling. First of all, and... Amon Ross St. Brown in his rookie season yeah. had more touchdowns than DJ Moore ever had in the season. He had five DJ Moore's career highs, four. Yeah, and he, he got every <laughs> single one of those touchdowns when Swift and or Hawkinson were out. Um, I'm not discounting anything he did last year. He was one of my favorite sleepers. I'm just saying that he he's a high floor guy, which I love that. Uh, but that's why he was just a little bit down my rankings. I have him uh, wide receiver 25 this week. So I'm ahead of consensus, right? Yep. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm not like bearish on him, but yeah, like, I don't know what the consensus is thinking this week. Cause he was like uh, his ADP was wide receiver 20. So um, I'm just saying ADP is wrong. Not me. 
Yeah, it's weird, yeah, because you wouldn't think like the Eagles yeah. are just like, oh my god, you got to bump it down nine spots. But right, uh, exactly. <laughs> Who who are you, who are you bumping down this week? Who are you? Looking? Um, well, I'm bumping down Jalen Waddle. Uh, it does look like he's dealing with a lower body injury. He's gonna play, obviously. But we've been talking about this sort of all off season how the you know Tyreek Hill's addition is gonna lower his target share, mm-hmm. and I just think that the improved offensive line is gonna lower his target share as well because, like I said last season when Devontae Parker and Will Fuller were out. Uh, the offensive line was a disaster. They really had to alter this offense um, in a way that just got Waddle the ball immediately. So um, I, I just consider him more of a low end wide receiver too. And he's been drafted um, sort of like a high end wide receiver too. I remember early in the off season, he was still wide receiver 12. That was back when the ADP wasn't reacting to any news. Um, luckily it caught up towards the end, but uh, just heading into week one, he's, he's more of a low end wide receiver too, where he's part of sit start decisions. Um, wait, where do you have his, uh, catches and yards? He averaged like six and a half catches for 63 last year. Where do you have it? Oh, week one. Um, I have him closer to about high fours, like 4.8, 4.9. Again, he's dealing with that lower body injury. So that's going to depend on, you know, practice reports and things like that. Where do you have him at? Yeah, I have him five for 54. So five, I'm, okay. I'm wondering, though, you know, because he averaged six and a half last year and, you know, projecting a guy at five, usually the books will float like a 5.5 5 because they're not going to float a, a straight five. Oh, right. So I'm, I'm wondering if they'll float like a, a juiced under five and a half. I'd be all Ooh. over that if they did that. But Yeah, uh, like five and a half and the under is better than uh, like minus 140. I would consider taking the under, right? Yep. No, oh, maybe like minus 130. But yeah, I'm thinking the same thing, uh, especially for week one. Um, and then Debo Samuel, um, I actually just, I bumped him down to wide receiver 10. Um, he should be fine. He's been dealing with a knee injury. Uh, but I just don't think we're going to see that, you know, massive five to eight rush attempt sort of usage that we saw towards the end of last year. I would assume to begin the year, they're going to take it easy on him a bit, maybe closer to two or three rush attempts. Um, you know, there's going to be lower volume overall with Trey Lance under center. Trey Lance himself is going to sort of eat into those sort of goal line carries that we saw Debo get last year. So I think Debo's due for some touchdown regression. I still love him, but I view him more of a, you know, low end wide receiver one to at least begin the season. Um, Whereas on like FanDuel, he's 8,400. I think he's more expensive than um, Justin Jefferson. He's 1,200 more expensive than Michael Pittman, who I'm projecting almost the same amount of FanDuel points. So I'm just a little bit lower on Debo this week at wide receiver 10. Yeah, uh, you'll 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 get a kick out of this. I had to go in Excel Uh-oh. and create a whole new model to model wide receiver carries uh, in Y plus one because, like, usually I just kind <laughs> of project wide receiver carries. You know, it's just kind of a you could just do it without doing using any kind of model. It's usually you know some guys get like a half a carry or whatever. Yeah, like CD Lamb, just yeah, 0.5 like I, carries. Right, yeah. but I wanted to see, like, what is the actual regression? So I took every receiver that had carries in two consecutive years and I sent uh, over the last, like, 15 years or so, and I, I regressed it. And it turns out you take about 60 to 65% uh, of wow. the previous year carries. And then you could either, if you, you could either do it with, a, a like, a zero intercept and then you just take about 66% or you could do, like, a, 0.04 carries per game uh and you take about 62 percent and uh yeah that's how you get carries so i have them projected for about two two 2.2 so more like two carries uh you know instead of like you said his what was it yep. five to eight down yep. the stretch. and now he has a just a massive rushing quarterback with him to compete for those you know goal line touches as well so yeah maximum regression coming for debo that would have been a fun rushing prop right there. Debo's rushing yards. We we <laughs> started doing that. We started doing that like the week um, that transition happened. I felt like we were ahead of that curve. Uh, well, you were ahead of him ranking him in the top five, but we we definitely sniffed out that new role early on. Yeah, I remember I, I've been on the Debo running the ball because I remember when I was like searching for props to bet for that Super Bowl Chiefs Niners. I remember mm. betting like a Debo rushing over, even though it made no sense because it was like, it was like 15 and a half or something crazy, which is super oh. high for a receiver. But I was like, every time he carries the ball, he's getting like 10, 15 yards. Like I'm betting the over as long as he gets, he just needs yeah. two carries and he got, I think he got over. So 
Uh, I've always just kind of been on alert for him running the ball. And Shanahan's just ridiculous. I mean, just <laughs> well, his, we know that his scheme is just nuts. So like, yeah, he, he, he just gets this, like, just like with the yak, like they're getting like 10 yards of yak catching the ball 10 yards yeah. downfield. So, but I, I think they, they're, they're going to reserve his five plus carries for the end. of. The, I, I feel like by week eight, every game was a must win game for the 49ers, right? That's about when it started. Yeah. Yeah. It was like every game was a must win game. So that it just seems like based on the leverage, uh, just the importance of the game dictates how many carries he's get. So yeah, week one, two sounds about right. And don't forget, they got Ray Ray McLeod now. That's, you know, that's oh, a that's gadget right. guy you can have some fun with yep. moving around. So uh, maybe he takes some away too. Uh, all right. Player I'm low on is Rashad Bateman. So he's the consensus wide receiver 22. And nothing against Rashad Bateman. I think. I think he's going to be the unquestioned number one receiver in Baltimore. Uh, we talked to Matt Harmon uh, about him, and he turns out he can line up as the X receiver and win against press. So uh, he is a very good receiver, but I still have him in the mid-30s. Uh, it's week one. I don't expect Baltimore to be very pass-heavy. Like, Baltimore was a, mm. had a big outlier season last year in terms of their pass rate. Like, because everyone in their secondary got hurt, they ended up passing at nearly like a league average rate, which never happens with Baltimore. But, uh, you know, now big favorite against the Jets. Yes, I know they got some running backs banged up or Dobbins banged up, I should say. But uh, I still think Baltimore is going to go back to running the football uh, a lot more. And, you know, the Jets improved that cornerback as well. You got Gardner. You you might have DJ Reed as well. And uh, he's he's pretty good, too. So. Uh, I just don't think it's like one of those weeks where Baltimore is going to go super pass heavy and Mark Andrews still yeah. going to be the, the number one target there. So I think you want to target Baltimore in games where they're facing a little bit more of a challenge, you know, maybe they're the underdog or, you know, shorter favorite or something like that. This game, I mean, they could, they could get up and uh, they, it might be good night for, for throwing the ball. Yeah. All right. We got for the prop. Uh, let's go with AJ Brown on his new team, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, let's go with his receiving yards against the Lions. Um, I'm gonna set the line at 61 and a half. Ooh, I get to choose an over. I am oh at, no, I am at 60. My mean is about 70, so median uh, would be about what 65, 66. Jesus, uh, uh, how many yards do you have uh, Jalen Hurts throwing for? That is a good question. I have him throwing for 230. Okay. So, so I got Brown getting, yeah, like 30% of the yards. Um, yeah. So, so you I probably got just have 70, Smith at 50. Yeah. You just have a slightly higher, you know, target share for Brown, um, mm -hmm. but not too far off when it comes to the overall yardage. Um, maybe I'm loving Dallas Goddard a little too much, or maybe Devonta Smith, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit lower than you on Brown. I mean, wh who's covering him? On the line, like yeah, no, <laughs> Oruarie, Jeff Okuda, like yeah, Okuda, he looks better. Um, you know, he I mean, still has potential. He does, but, but not against AJ Brown. He don't. No, <laughs> uh, no, I agree. Like, that's why I like Jalen Hurts this week. I can't yeah. believe I was yeah. hoping, I was hoping that you would take the under. So, nah, I'm not. I'm not doing it. Not on me AJ. off guard. And like he's been every. Training camp report. He's been balling, <laughs> yeah, killing it. Like I, I'm not gonna be that guy. Nope, not there. Not, not this one. Fair enough. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not making the argument against Brown. I can't do it. Yeah, nah, he's my wide receiver nine this week. Do you have him in top ten? Love it. Uh, ooh, that's a great question. I probably don't. Um, no, no, he's I, right there, eleven, twelve range with Keenan Allen and T Higgins. The week is still young, though. The week is still young. <laughs> I could see you moving a spot or two. Yeah, there. probably. I, I could see yeah, that too. I got I got his mean at uh, four four point eight for seventy with point four nine touchdowns. So uh, median is about four four and a half catches for like sixty six, sixty five, sixty six. So uh, yeah, I, I like him this week. And he's one. You know, anytime a receiver is getting to like that point five touchdowns, uh, that's yeah, a big that's... model. You know, that that doesn't happen very often. So uh, it's a good AJ Brown week. Yeah, they didn't uh, trade all those assets and pay them all that money to be a decoy. That's for sure. Oh no, not at all. I mean, he's and he's done this on before. Like he's done this yeah. on a run heavy offense. Yep. His target uh, per route run last year was twenty nine percent, which is one of the highest. I, I hate to say this, but if uh, Hertz were to miss time and Minshew is under center, I could see uh, you know Brown being in my top five. Yeah, 
I mean, Brown still hasn't had like a ridiculous season for as talented as he is and yeah. as well as he's played. Like the numbers, either because he gets hurt, and misses a few games or whatever. So yeah, uh, they would you know hurts those scrambles and everything just take some of the yeah. uh, passing yardage away. All right, let's go to tight end. Top five. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, George Kittle, and I have Dalton Schultz, uh, tight end five this week. I have uh, Kelsey, Andrews, Waller, Kittle, Pitts. Uh, I guess Waller's not going to be a popular top uh, top five, but he's actually my tight end three now. If he's hurt, I'll I'll bump him yeah. up. But um, <laughs> I like I like this game environment. I mean, you have a total of fifty two and a half compared to Kittle, who's a you know a home favorite with a total of like what is it? low 40s and Kyle Pitts who's a uh you know low 40s as well and the Saints you know, they're still still a solid defense um you know I know they're going through some things but still should be one of the better defenses in the league so and, and they've always done well against tight ends too so uh yeah I'm, I actually like Waller as long as he suits up I think you know I, I read something really interesting about Waller and that was they were like they uh they actually have a plan for him in the red zone. McDaniel's has a plan oh. for him in the red zone, and because Waller, I, I know you know this, like he he hasn't scored as many touchdowns as you would expect given his, the amount of targets and catches he gets and yards. So and his hearing, size, right? Exactly. So hearing that McDaniel has a plan for him in a red zone, and you know he's going to be freed up with you know Renfro and Adams to also contend yeah. with. So uh, I, I feel good about Waller this week. I mean, I just you know the the other. I, I guess I could do it with I guess I could do it with Dalton Schultz just because like Dak has that's his number two target but uh, Schultz will, it will be moving into my top five if Waller gets yeah, exactly uh, out. all right who are you high on um, well I'm high on uh, Kyle Pitts um, I have him higher than you so I, I yep. love that he's my uh, tight end three this week um, like his price point on Fando as well he's six K uh, it's sort of the sweet spot this week for tight end when I was building lineups. Um, but you know, the, the, the ceiling, there is no ceiling for Kyle Pitts. He's a generational talent entering year two. The only thing that could slow him down this year is Marcus Mariota not being great, but Mariota has a history of targeting his tight end. Remember the Delaney Walker days. So, um, you know, I want to invest in Kyle Pitts early in the season. And like you said, the saints isn't an easy matchup. Um, but I think, uh, Lattimore will probably on Drake London for most of the game. So it could actually funnel more, even more targets. Um, to Kyle Pitts so I just think uh, the, the first week of the season is when I went and invest on a player like Kyle Pitts so love him this week he's my tight end three there's no debating it whatsoever I'm looking and then, at uh, I'm looking at our projections we both have them projected for right around 60 yards but you have them with like 0. 0.08 higher touchdowns like my, my oh, model is still, yeah like my yeah. model is still waiting for him to like score <laughs> another touchdown before it bumps. Yeah. Up. Right now I, I have him at 0. 0.2 touchdowns, which is still oh, higher than last yeah. year, higher than last year, but it's a low scoring game where the Falcons implied for like 18, 18 ish. Yeah. Points. It's low. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. kind of why I'm a little bit lower on pits. It's just, there's not, there doesn't project to be a, a lot of touchdowns to go around. Yeah. Right? Fair enough. I, and feel, that's... I feel you with the, he's just a baller. So exactly. Yeah. We're, we're kind of on reverse sides of this coin. Cause I remember uh, heading into the season, I was saying, you know, th the only thing I don't like about Pitts and Drake London is the limited touch touchdown upside. And here we are with me with a higher touchdown projection. <laughs> um, the other guy I want to mention is we got to talk about him is Isaiah likely. Oh, I have maybe. him. I haven't tied him 31, but his range of outcomes um, is certainly higher than that. He has a massive ceiling because we don't know exactly what his role is. Right now, his ECR is tight end 36. So I love being higher on uh, likely than the consensus. But he looks like a potential steal uh, in the fourth round by the Ravens. They have done this before with Mark Andrews in the third round. Um, and they have used two tight end sets before with uh, Mark Andrews and Hayden Hurst. So I think they're going to try to find a way to get likely on the field week one um, just because their wide receiver depth behind Rashad Bateman um, is pretty shaky. Um, so I could see them carving out like a Kyle Pitts, Mike Gusecki type of role for likely in week one. And you kind of saw that in week three, they gave him the starter treatment. He was supposed to play. He was my favorite play um, in DFS. And then they benched him and they said, you're too, you're too valuable. You know, we consider you a starter. So the, the tea leaves have been showing likely having a, you know, pretty big role to start the season. So I like getting him week one at 4,100. This will be the cheapest he, you know, he's ever going to be his roster ship might be high in DFS. I don't care. I love taking a flyer on him 
um, in week one. Yeah, I, um, we both have – I have him at 1.7 catches for 21 yards, but obviously uh, the ceiling's yeah. a lot higher. Yeah. I have him running uh, about 40% of the routes right off the bat. Uh, so I, I do think they're going to use him as kind of that de facto, you know, third wide receiver, um, you know, in this offense from from the jump. So I, I like him. I think he's a guy to monitor because he could – Find, he could find his way into at least in DFS. I don't think he'll be consistent, even you know if he plays more than we think. Yeah. Just because I don't. Again, I don't expect the Ravens to be as pass heavy as they were last year. Uh, okay. Um, was that it? Is Pitts likely anybody else? Um, no. I like Dallas Goddard too. I, I like him. Uh, it looks like I'm on par with ECR at tight end seven. I do think in DFS. He's a nice pivot off of Pitts. I don't think Goddard's going to be highly rostered. I think a lot of people are going to pivot to, you know, Hurts, A.J. Brown stacks. I couldn't blame him, but this is the first season Dallas Goddard's going to be the starting tight end week one, so I can't pass up some Goddard shares. Uh, He was the tight end six week seven through 18 last year after the Hurts trade, so um, I love investing in Goddard week one, and like I said, he's my tight end seven this week. Yeah, I I just like uh, like this all these Eagles pass catchers against yeah. the Lions. Uh, for me, I'm going with Irv Smith here. I think he's kind of flown under the radar because we don't know we don't know if he's going to play. It sounds like he's on track to play. And, uh, you know, I talked about how Jair Alexander is probably one of the few cornerbacks that could at least maybe contain Justin Jefferson on some play. So that kind of leads you to look for, okay, who else could, could kind of come up big for Minnesota? And I think Smith is kind of the forgotten – man in that yeah. offense because we haven't you know he missed the entire year last year but you know green bay i think if they do end up having a weakness and again i like their defense it looks really good but i think it might end up being against the tight end they were bottom five in dvoa uh, against tight ends last season so it's it gets ugly quick it gets late early at tight end like you got yeah. the top 10 <laughs> and then it's just like it kind of drops off a cliff so i actually have smith up at tight end 12 he's tight end 16 consensus so if you're in a 12 team league or, or 14 teamer, I think you actually give Smith some consideration because it just comes back to, you know, okay, which quarterbacks do we have projected to to throw for a decent amount of touchdowns? And I've Kirk Cousins, you know, in that 1.7 range uh, for touchdowns and, and getting a decent amount of yards too in this should be a close game. So uh, give me some Irv Smith. Yeah, I love it. And I mean, to be fair, he's coming back from, from a thumb injury. You don't need that to catch passes, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be more worrisome if it was his surgical repaired knee. You know, he missed last season due to the meniscus tear. But the fact that it is a thumb injury makes me like him week one. Like, he should be good to go. He's on track, so love him. I, You know, he was one of my favorite tight ends heading into last year, so I'm super excited to finally see him as the starting tight end uh, along with Dallas Goddard for week one. Yeah, and I love I love it because it's O'Connell and you know coming yeah. over from the Rams and mm-hmm. last year he played Tyler Higby pretty much every snap didn't make him block very much and if you're not making Higby block you're definitely not making Irv Smith block so uh, yeah and they traded away, they got or they didn't sign trade away Conklin so there's like nobody behind Irv Smith so yeah do you have him like eighty percent routes run this week Yep, I have him uh, nice eighty five and then Johnny Munch getting the other the rest of them. Exactly. The block Same. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, three point seven catches, thirty-seven <laughs> yards, and just over point about a third of a touchdown for Irv, and that's that's enough to get the tight end twelve. Yep. Uh, all right, who are you low on? Uh, well, just this is kind of cheap, but Darren Waller just tight end six <laughs> until we find out more about the hamstring injury. He's seven K on Fanduel. So while I, I do like your theory about they could use him more in the red zone. Um, it's going to be, ha- have to be after week one for me to just see if this hamstring injury was a real thing or something shady, like, you know, waiting for a new contract or something, but I'm a little bit lower on him at least to begin the week. And then the guy that I was really low on heading into the season and obviously heading into week one, Mike is Um, I have him at tight end 20 right now. It looks, looks like the uh, consensus is pretty low on him as well at tight end 18, but, mm-hmm. um, he could be used more as a blocker this year. They've been lining up in line more um in this new scheme more of the 49ers scheme so uh he could struggle at least early on um where the thing we loved about Gasecki was he just lined up in the slot all the time always run a ton of routes um but he never had much touch on upside um so I just think all these factors lead me to you know being off him I consider more of a low end tight end too at least entering the season 
Yeah, I can see that. We have we just have to kind of see what's going on with this Dolphins offense. You know, like you said, once you get one week of data, we can see how many yeah. routes you run. Is it comparable yeah. uh, to last year? Then we could kind of uh, adjust. Uh, for me, uh, the guy I want on is Cole Komet. And, you know, I, he's been flying up draft boards again because nobody knows what to do after the top 10 tight end. So Komet, I yeah. think, was consensus number 11 uh, on season long boards. And this week he is the consensus tight end number 12. And I just think that's too high again in this matchup against the Niners where the Bears are projected to score, you know, 17 odd points in this game. Uh, don't expect a ton of passing yards for Justin Fields, you know, I think he's going to do a lot with his legs. So I have Komet pr projected for 85% uh, of the routes, which is kind of where he topped out last year. Um, and I still have him as my tight end 17. I have him at uh, 3.7 catches, 39 yards, uh, but only 0.15 touchdowns. Because again, mm. just, you know, I use, I, I kind of use my. Yeah, I was going to ask. Your, you know, I have your... the Bears projected for, yeah, 17 points. So there's just not a lot of touchdowns to go around. And, you know, they, there's a chance that, you know, they could get a rushing score or two. So uh, just not a lot of passing touchdowns to, to go around for Kabat. And that's really what does it at tight end is, you, you know, outside of that top 10 where you can count on the usage and the, the, the catches and yards, you really just need a touchdown. And I just don't think Kabat is a good touchdown bet this week. And your uh, your model probably doesn't like the fact that he uh, had zero touchdowns on ninety three targets <laughs> last year, right? Yeah, I actually, yeah, I go by route too, so yeah, it was even worse. It was like zero touchdowns on like yeah, but the uh, <laughs> the main reason was Jimmy Graham just coming in, you know, running in the end zone, turnaround, uh, tilting Stucky and I doing things like that. But um, with Jimmy Graham gone, don't you think Komet's going to see you know some more red zone targets or what? Yeah, I mean, I have him regressing, you know, to the mean in his touchdown rate, and it's, he still is not getting a lot of – I mean, <laughs> nobody on the Bears is getting a lot of touchdowns. Right, right. I have him at 5.5% um, his yeah. touchdown rate. So, yeah, 0. 0.23 touchdowns. Sounds like I'm way over you. I haven't had an 11, but I, I get what you mean. I, I just consider more of a high floor guy than anything. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, it's just – San Francisco's also uh, top five in DVOA against tight ends. I mean, he got Warner back. I know Jimmy Ward is out, but uh, – Again, just not the team you really just want to go at. I just don't think you want to play mm -hmm. offensive players against San Francisco. Uh, all right, let's go with the prop. I'm going to go with another one of these tight ends that's kind of been on the cusp, and uh, I don't think anyone knows what to do with, but he's ranked number 11 this week. So right outside, he's that first tight end after the consensus top 10, and that's Pat Fryer move. Oh, gonna, boy. I'm gonna Baby Gronk. Yep. I'm going to set the line at 36 and a half receiving yards. What you got? Damn it. Um, I have it <laughs> at 34. Um, I'm going to go with under, though. Ooh. I'm going to go with under. Um, I just think there's going to be less pass attempts to go around than last year. Again, Big Ben uh, was slinging around the yard last year. George Pickens is going to be a beast this year, so... Um, if if he didn't look as good as he did uh, heading into the season, I probably would have taken the over. But I would say that's probably the tipping point for me, and why I'm just a couple yards below you. Yeah, I got him. I got him right. Uh, right about thirty two for a median, thirty five for a mean, and uh, three three point nine catches. So, but only nine yards a catch. Really, that's where do you have him ranked? Uh, Thirteen. So yeah, I'm at fourteen. So we're both lower. Yeah, I I just have Smith above him, and. Uh, ah. I think oops, I forget who else. One other guy. No one important. It's tight end. <laughs> uh, where, where do you have Albert O? Oh, I think that's is that who I have it? Let's see. I have him 10 right now. That's is that crazy? Ooh, I have him 14. Maybe I should bump him up. Yeah, I have him 10. I have been I've been welcome me some Albert O, but just kind of like I heard he's dealing with some kind of injury. I know. Yeah. That's so sucks. Every, it seems like everyone is, but yeah, maybe I might bump him up. I mean, he love his targets per route always a baller in that category which usually predicts future success but uh all right that is going to do it for our week one nfl player projections episode uh, of the action network podcast presented by FanDuel. for more great fantasy content from sean and i check out our full fantasy preview episode out now over on the fantasy flex podcast channel and if you're into betting be sure to check out my weekly betting preview 
episode on this channel every Thursday with Stucky and uh, actionnetwork.com for all of our content. You can also follow Sean on Twitter at the underscore oddsmaker and me at Chris Raybon. And you can find us at those same handles on the free award-winning Action Network app. Until next time, let's get this money.